Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR and my YouTube channel. Say if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified when I put out a new video, ring that bell. Can you hear the rain in the background? I'm sitting in my camper down in Coleman, Alabama, and it's been raining for days and days. We had a little bit of a break yesterday, but I wanted to do this video without the rain in the background. I guess uh, that's not uh, going to happen, so uh, please bear with me while I make uh, these videos in my camper. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, set up N1MM Logger to use RIDI FSK, and I had a request for this uh, not too long ago. And uh, I've been using WF View, so I wanted to use WF View with N1MM Logger, and it works real good. Uh, you you can use it with uh, N1MM Logger, and it gives you a little bit better rig control than the default interface for uh, that N1MM has. Uh, so it's kind of a nice addition, I think. Uh, however, I do prefer the Spectrum Scope in N1MM over the uh, waterfall or display in the uh, WF view application. So I'll, I'll show you the difference between the two. But first, uh, I've got an article on my website I made just a few days ago, and I'm going to follow that article. So if you go to my website, look up the article, it'll probably be the uh, last one that I posted, N1MM Logger Plus, Ready FSK Guide for amateurs and pros and I'm just gonna follow this to get everything set up and then I'll probably do another video uh, showing how to operate so uh, let's get started and the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your ICOM 7300 or your ICOM 7610 whatever uh, radio you're using uh, I think this is gonna mainly apply to ICOM radios uh, you, you because of the uh, the spectrum scope in N1MM Logger, but you'll be able to, to use other radios uh, like I do, uh, but you, you won't get the spectrum scope, uh, and you won't be able to get the scope on WF view. So uh, these are yeah, mainly for ICOM radios, and uh, the most recent ones, of course. So get the ICOM 7300 set up, and I have the screen captures on my website, but what you want to pay particular attention to is the USB Send Keying, uh, that configuration. I'm using uh, DTR for RIDI. And uh, then, of course, you, you want Unlink from Remote to be set in the radio. And there are a couple other things that you, you may need uh, to get this going. But anyway, it's uh, RIDI FSK that we're going to be doing. I like RIDI FSK because I can use the twin peak filter in the ICOM radio and uh, that's a real nice filter that they have uh, especially for RIDI FSK so uh, get your 7300 set up and then uh, let me scroll down a little bit and uh, virtual serial ports emulator is the next and I've got this on my I got an icon on my desktop here and I've already got it set up and uh, this is the same setup that I've been using for WF view uh, I'm splitting my COM5 to COM1, and uh, I can use uh, COM1 in M1 NM logger, and I can also use COM1 for FSK keying. So it, this comes in handy. Uh, I'm not using the two cables and the CIV cable I, I normally use for rig control, but if I want to get that spectrum scope in N1 MM logger, I have to use the USB cable. So to make things easier, I just am using Virtual Serial Ports Emulator to split that COM port. So I got that going, and it's going. It's initialized. That's okay. Then the next thing I want to do is open up WF View, and again on my website I've got an article on this uh, on uh, WF View and how to set it up for the 7300, just like I have here uh, using uh, COM1. If I go over to settings and the radio interface, I'm using the serial USB and uh, then the uh, CIV address for the radio is 94 for the 7300 and if you use a 7610, that's of course is 98 and uh, then you have the COM1 uh, for the port but I've got a, another article on my website just setting this up, uh, WFU. 
So, uh, uh, and I need to start this first before I start the spectrum scope on N1MM logger. If I uh, try to start the spectrum scope first, uh, they there's a conflict in there and uh, they won't work together so I gotta get this uh, get this going first and of course this is the rig control which I use I enable my uh, uh, tuner and uh, I can adjust the uh, power output right here I'm gonna put it down to zero since if I test it I don't want to put out any power uh, I'm using a G5 RV down here in Alabama and it's been working pretty good I've made a, a few Rudy contacts, uh, not very many. I've got uh, another few days before uh, this OK uh, contest starts, and it's a amateur radio club in uh, Czechoslovakia, I believe, uh, Czech Republic. Yeah, I guess that's what it is, a Czech Republic. And uh, so over in Europe, and I want to try to make some DX contacts uh, with a Rudy FSK. So I've got WF View going, and I minimize it. And then the next is, of course, N1MM logger. I'll go ahead and start this. I saved my windows, the window positions. So each time it opens, it comes up just like this. And if you want to save your window positions, just go to Tools. And uh, then down here to Save Window Positions. But first, let's talk about MMTTY. N1MM Logger comes with this EXTFSK module. Um, so you don't have to download this separately like uh, we used to have to do. So I've got a link on my website on that web page uh, for MMTTY and you can download it. I should probably go through the MMTTY setup first but for you to get to this point after you install MMTTY you'll need to configure uh, N1MM Logger and uh, for it to bring up the uh, MMTTY and the ready engine so let's go to configure and configure ports and I can move this down so let's talk about configuring N1 MM logger first I'm using COM1 uh, that's the port I'm using and then my radio in there is a 7300 and then I have CW and other checked off and the next is set. I'll click on it. And I have the speed set. These are defaults, but DTR pin 4 is set for CW. Now I can use this uh, configuration for RIDI and CW contest. And I ought to be able to use it for phone contest without any problem. I haven't tested it out sending record, recorded or saved. Uh, phone messages like a CQ. I haven't tested that out yet, but I should be able to do it the, that, this way too. Uh, but right now I have tested it out with CW and RIDI FSK. So a uh, CW will work if you have that set, and then RTS is always off. And of course the, uh, the hex number is 94 for the 7300, and we're just using one radio. Down here I don't have anything checked off. So this is pretty simple, pretty basic. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then the next tab is the function keys. And by the way, I have the important uh, screen captures on my website, right on that web page. So you can go back to it any time. And uh, basically I had the, the function keys set up just, uh, just the way they are. Uh, just uh, how they are in the default setup go over to digital modes and this is uh, something that I've had to change if you want to use MMTTY you want to put the path into it so if you're starting fresh and you gotta install MMTTY pay attention to the uh, default location and you can see this is the default location rain starting to come down a little bit stronger now and then if you if I ever do use FL Digi I went ahead and I put in the uh, the path for FL Digi but we want the sound card over here 
and then the I'm not using a second interface, so none. And then of course the uh, the location of MMTTY. Check off FSK because I'm using FSK. Uh, this is not uh, AFSK. Uh, FSK. And I don't really need to set this up for the second one. Down here, I don't need to set up anything down here. I just left it uh, as the default. Let's go over to the other screen, and I don't think I changed anything in here. This is just the default. Not using win key, a win keyer for my CW. I've got a win keyer and I have used it before, but I'm not using it now. I'm sending. I'll be able to send CW with the computer uh, just using COM1. And then uh, mode control. Uh, I say I leave this as the default, the radio mode. But I changed this uh, mode ready. I changed it to ready, so this is important. I think the default is USB. Then on the antennas tab, don't have anything in there. I've got just my G5 RV on the back of my radio, and uh, the ICOM 7300 only has one antenna, uh, one antenna uh, connector on the back. Score reporting, I uh, didn't change anything in there. Don't have to worry about broadcast data. And then the WS, uh, WSJT and JTDX setup. I do have the setup because I have used WSJT in contest. Uh, I used it during field day. So, uh, and I think I've been in another contest using it, but I, I did go ahead and set this up. And it's basically just uh, the defaults in here. Enable this and uh, the default port 2237. And uh, let's see, JTDX, yeah, uh, enabled it. And uh, the default port 52001, then the path to it. So uh, once you set this up and you, you get this included, the MMTTY path, I'll go ahead and click on OK. And at this point, my rig control should be working. I've got a log in here. And the log I'm using is just a DX log to play around with. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to go to the file. And then this is the one I'm using right now. I can open the log in the database and take a look at the exchange and I've got in there. My exchange coming up for that contest is going to be 0, 04, so I, or 4. Uh, my CQ zone, so I went ahead and put it in there. But for for this to to work properly, I want to make sure I'm using the right files. And over here under digital function key file name, I've got the DX general uh, macros. So if you if you've got something else different in there and you're using a D, the, just the DX log. Uh, you can hit change and it'll download the correct law uh, the correct digital function file for you and we'll take a look at that over over here when we start operating but uh, anyway I can go ahead and close this I'll just click OK computer's being a little slow because of the uh, video program that I have going. Uh, OBS is the program that I use for recording these videos and it's a hog. So after you have rig control working with N1MM logger you probably won't have uh, this displaying and the spectrum scope up here displaying so I'll go ahead and close that but you'll have rig control with it and at this point uh, we have uh, WF view working, and uh, this is a uh, this is pretty nice. It gives you a little bit more, uh, a few more options that you can change uh, with the radio uh, than you get with N1MM logger. 
uh, using WF view I can adjust the volume and uh, change the uh, the RF I can change the transmit power um, I can of course set my band edges up here uh, my spectrum mode so I can do a few things that I can't do with uh, just the N1MM logger but what you can do with this is you can go back between uh, you can change modes I, I'll go over to CW mode I can just type that in there and when I when I hit that the digital interface will close and my radio switches over to CW so I'm on uh, I'd be able to send CW now if I hit a, a one of these macros here I'll go ahead and turn my radio up make sure I'm tuned of course I'm not going to put out any power but I'll show you if I just uh, go ahead and send my call sign or a QRL So if you have everything set up properly, you'll you'll have a CW transmit. You'll you'll be able to use WF view. You can change modes. I'll go back to RIDI, and when I go back to RIDI, it'll bring up the digital interface. And uh, the next thing uh, we need to talk about is setting up uh, setting up MMTTY. And uh, this might be the tricky part. If you follow these instructions, I don't think you'll have any problems. But sometimes you just, you know, I, I've, I've done it myself many times. I just miss something. And, you know, I have to go back through and, and look at the setup screen again in the video. So that's why I post the screen captures on my website. So you have a static page you can go to and look at. So to uh, get, uh, get this working, what you'll want to do it uh, it'll probably be closed on yours unless you typed RIDI in there the digital interface will come up but if you want to show the digital interface just go to Windows or, sorry just go over to window and uh, down here to digital interface now my radio is on uh, RTTY and it that's not USB dash D that would be AFK SK and we're not using AFSK we're using FSK so the radio will be in RIDI mode RTTY and we're, I'm gonna go in and set up you may not have this come up you probably well you won't have it come up if you hadn't set up MMTTY another tutorial I'd run through they recommend setting up MMTTY first just to get it working and I think that's a good idea uh, but like I said if you if you follow this you'll you'll get it working um, but that, that that is a good idea and if you do have problems that's what I recommend you just go go down and you find the the icon for MMTTY on your on your desktop and open it up and set it up all by itself and uh, this will this is what it'll look like so to set it up, uh, just go to Options and then Set Up. And the first tab is the Demodulator. And I, I didn't change anything in here, but you'll want to check. And this is off uh, because, well, it's it's I've got uh, AFC and Net that had uh, come up. If I hit Ham, it'll bring it up right. 2125. So you should have 2125, 170, and 60 in there. Uh, we don't need to use this dual peak filter because the ICOM radio has it built in, and it's it's much better. So uh, AGC, I've got that checked off, and I think that I had uh, gone through these, and uh, a lot of this is the, the default, but you'll want to set it up just like this. And uh, we're at 45.45 uh, baud, 4545. And this does uh, actually have uh, the capability for 75 baud, so that's a uh, that's another video.
that's a lot faster. I think that's 100 words a minute, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, the second tab is AFC, and I don't have that checked off. I've just got fixed uh, set in there, and nothing checked off in here. It's not a real important tab. Uh, decode, uh, baud rate 4545. And uh, I think everything else is this this is the default. An important tab is the transmit tab, and this is where we get this little this little program down here. I've got this at LTR. Yeah, I think this is the default. UOS is checked. Uh, P push to talk and FSK. We're using the port. Uh, it's the EXT FSK 64. And if you click on that little drop down, you'll find it down at the very bottom. So that's what you want to have selected. And then you don't uh, don't need to do anything else. But I'm going to bring up this radio command tab and show you that I, I don't have uh, don't have anything else configured in here. I'm gonna hit cancel. So this uh, on this trans on this transmit tab, you just want to put uh, PTT and, and FSK. Uh, put that in there. EXT FSK 64. Font window is not a big deal. Miscellaneous is because in miscellaneous uh, we've got this is the the all the default. But over here in the transmit port, we want to check off COM-TXD, uh, which is FSK. And then you can click on the USB port. The default that I have is, is uh, A, normal, which is checked off. That works just fine with me. Uh, it's been working fine on mine and all the actually all the computers that I've put this on. So go ahead and click that. And the next one is the sound. And on the sound, we want the reception to be uh, the microphone or the USB audio codec. And then on the transmission, we want the empty one. We don't want to have any uh, anything in there. So make sure you get this uh, set properly or you're not going to be able to decode. And I found out uh, again uh, today that if I plug my uh, microphone into my computer, that a lot of some of my programs will automatically jump over to that uh, to that microphone I plugged in. So I had to go back in here and change it and put it back on the USB audio codec. And I can go ahead and hit OK. And when you do that, you'll bring up this EXT FSK. And uh, if you got your radio, your COM ports like mine, and it probably won't be like mine, but you'll just have to know that you set this to that, that port that was split in uh, uh, Virtual Serial Port Emulator. My physical port is COM5, and I've got it split to COM1. So I've got COM1 in there. And if it's going to work, the status will be okay. If I switch it to something else, I'll get this NG no go or not good so COM1 and then the FSK output and the way I've got it set up in my radio is DTR that's in the uh, icon menu for uh, USB sync keying uh, same as for CW I'm using DTR and uh, push to talk is RTS but right now, if you got everything set up properly, I can go down and turn up the uh, the audio on the, the radio. And let's see, I'm uh, 14097. Uh, I want to go to 14085. Uh, That's a good uh, CQ calling frequency on RIDI. So uh, I can change the frequency here, or I can change the frequency in here if I want to go to 14086. Uh, uh, just type it in there, hit enter, and it changes the, the frequency. So that, that looks pretty good, and uh, I'm set up. 
I went ahead and I've been testing this out so I went ahead and I, I put some macros in here in uh, this interface and that's a whole nother video but it you can uh, you can do that uh, but you can you should be able to use these macros so for this I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this button and it'll bring up the digi the digi message editor and uh, this uh, this is uh, the these are the macros these are the uh, uh, what where you can edit the the macros and change the CQ if you want uh, but for the default uh, I've got uh, just CQ 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 this is my call sign my call sign CQ and you know I can add a, a couple more uh, CQs in there and then my call a couple more times if I wanted to um, you can go to file and import and assign a different function key set to this contest and I'm just using the DX log or I can save uh, the messages once I edit it I can save it to a file the rain's really coming down now I can save it to a different uh, uh, save the message to a different uh, function key file so this is this is a whole nother video too um, if you're used to using M1 MM logger you know what I'm talking about but it uh, it will it should be uh, just set up just fine for you if you go if it's not you can uh, try this go into file and then import and assign and then go down here and uh, it'll come up to the uh, this is the path it'll be under uh, uh, documents function key messages at least that's where it is on my computer uh, you can go and, and uh, select one and uh, oh this is the one for CW I have this is the one that's just the general uh, general file and do you want to associate it I'll click yes and I don't think anything will change on there I think that's the one I was using yep that's the one I was using so these macros should work if uh, if, you, if everything is set up properly uh, these macros should work uh, I when uh, during a contest uh, what I'll do is go over to the window and bring up the spectrum display and uh, during a contest or even right now if I uh, bring up that spectrum display I can look for uh, signals on there and if yours looks like this with a bunch of red dots you've got the squelch too too low increase uh, just hover over this line and just use your mouse wheel and bring up that level there and uh, then you'll you won't get all those uh, false signals so I'm at 14 uh, 0, 8, 6. Uh, this is the frequency uh, this width in here is not perfect for RIDI. Uh, it's it's a little bit wider than it needs to be, and I haven't figured out how to change that. So that uh, that'll come in probably the second video if I can figure that out. Uh, there's somebody down here, and I don't think that's a RIDI signal. That's something else. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I've got my power turned down, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, send a QRL. and you can see what I sent right over here run that again well let me do this let me just go ahead and turn up the transmit power can run a hundred watts on ready and I'll just uh, try that again I'm gonna hit over search and pounce and that brings up this macro So I am transmitting. I haven't seen anybody on those frequencies. They've just been pretty dead. I've made a few contacts. Four. So, uh, and I've tried a lot. Don't hear anything. So I can go ahead and run a CQ. And if somebody comes back to me, I can see them down in this in this display. I can 
can see them down here and I'll see it I'll see uh, the, these do line up with a RIDI signal the same as they do on the the front of the ICOM 7300 if you go to menu and decode while in your in RIDI mode you get a display just like this I set up a CQ over here it's a little bit longer so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it So if somebody was to come back to me, their signal would appear in here, and it would be right along these lines. And you can see this little module over here. Uh, you can see the code that it's sending. You try it again. I'm putting out 100 watts, ready FSK. into a G5 RV and it's up about 30 feet. So I've got my uh, I've got the my macro set up over here. It gives a little bit more. I give a report and then I give a little bit more and then I have the 73 in there. And you can do the same thing in these uh, these macros. I've got Telnet connected and what's neat about this spectrum scope up here is when uh, signals come in uh, stations that I'm looking for uh, people calling CQ on RIDI or on CW that's the filter that I have set uh, their call sign will pop up in here and I can just click on their call sign and it takes me to the frequency that they're on uh, so here is Telnet and uh, let me uh, show you you can go to it by going to window and then Telnet and then over to a cluster the one that I'm using is NADXE and it works real good DX engineering it works real good but uh, the filters that I have set uh, let's see uh, Oops, where am I? Oh, the bands and modes that I have set. I've just got CW and RIDI. And then uh, HF, I've got uh, the, the, the bands that I can work with this antenna. Um, don't have anything uh, set over here. Or in UHF or VHF. I guess I could work uh, 6 meters. But nothing showed up here. I, I did have some signals earlier, or some stations show up earlier, so I, I know it's it's working. And you can see it's connected. I just want stations uh, in uh, the U.S., so I'm filtering out everybody else, anybody that. Uh, puts up a spot say somebody from uh, uh, South America puts up a spot. I've, I've filtered that out so I, I don't see that it won't come up up here See this one was heard uh, what? This is a CW. Uh, they're further down uh, further down the the band so it wouldn't, wouldn't show up here Okay well, that, that's, uh, I think that's about as long a video as I want to do. And I'll make some more contacts and do another video on uh, actually operating. Um, there's a contest this weekend, and maybe I can make some contacts uh, during that contest. And uh, I'll record that. 
and uh, so this uh, this is basically uh, just getting it set up and, and working so if you have any questions or comments please make them below uh, if you post questions down below it'll help others as well and on YouTube down below you'll see uh, my t-shirt shop if you would like to support this channel please go over and find a design you like and buy a coffee mug or a sweatshirt t-shirt that'll certainly help okay well thanks for watching please remember to like subscribe and share tell your friends 73 and good DX